Hello and welcome to part 12 of our course on scientific writing. In the previous video we discussed the power of words. In this video we will see how to give our writing more energy. There are several things that can make your writing dull and listless. Some of them are using the passive voice, fuzzy verbs, and nominalizations. If you replace the passive voice with the active voice, replace fuzzy verbs with action verbs, and replace nominalizations with their verb or adjective equivalents, you will make your writing more energized, which will make it much more fun for the reader and much more likely that you will get your message across. So what's the difference between active voice and passive voice? When using the active voice, the subject of the sentence is doing something, whereas in the passive voice, something is being done to the subject of the sentence. Let's consider the following example, Bob called Alice. Here, Bob is the subject of the sentence, and he is also the actor because he is calling Alice. The active voice is clear, concise, and direct. It is visual and evocative. But sometimes, we don't want to tell the story about the actor. We want to tell the story about the acted on. In this case, we would use the passive voice and write, Alice was called by Bob. Here, Alice is the subject. Because Alice is being acted on, we call this the passive voice. Being able to choose between the active or the passive voice is a powerful tool because it allows us to control what goes into the topic or the stress. But the passive voice carries a price because it weakens the story. So when should you use the active or passive voice? Because the passive voice is weaker, you should try to avoid using it as a matter of course. But use the passive voice when you need it, for example to hide the actor or to control perspective. So let's look at some examples. In the active voice, we would say, constructive interference enhances spontaneous emission. Whereas in the passive voice, we would say, spontaneous emission is enhanced by constructive interference. Similarly, in the active voice, we would say, the lattice spacing controls the collective decay rate. While in the passive voice, we would say, the collective decay rate is controlled by the lattice spacing. In both cases, if this were the whole story, the active version would be stronger and shorter. But if the story is about spontaneous emission or collective decay rates, then the passive voice would put the right term in the right place. Okay, so now it's time for you to do an exercise. I'd like you to skim through your paper or essay and identify any cases where you use the passive voice. When you find these, determine if there is a good reason for using the passive voice. And if not, rewrite the sentence using the active voice. It might help you to find these words in your document if you do a search for the word by. Now is a good time to pause the video as you work on the exercise and try not to spend more than 10 minutes on it. Okay, so I hope you've had a chance to work on the exercise. Now let's move on to the difference between fuzzy and action verbs. Fuzzy verbs tell us that something happened, but they don't say what, whereas action words actually show you what happened. Let's look at an example of a fuzzy verb in use. The decay rates were computed for different lattice dimensions. Okay, that's nice, but what is the story in this paragraph? Is it how they were computed, or is it how they differ? If it's how they differ, a better way to say it is as follows. Decay rates increase with lattice dimension. This example uses a stronger verb and has a stronger message, and it makes obvious what the paragraph will be about. Let's look at another example. Our method facilitates modeling of complex networks by relating different lattice geometries. The words facilitate and relate don't really say what's happening here. We should be more explicit and write something as follows. Our method reduces the effective dimension of the lattice, simplifying the network model. The verbs reduce and simplify do say what's actually happening. Here are some more examples of fuzzy verbs and action verbs. The ones on the left are vague while the ones on the right actually tell us what's happening. Can you think of any other fuzzy verbs? Feel free to share your suggestions in the comments below. And now it's time for you to do another exercise. I'd like you to skim through your paper or essay and identify any fuzzy verbs. If you find any, see if you can rewrite the sentence using active verbs so it's clear what the story is about. It might help to do a word search in your document for fuzzy verbs in the list on the previous slide, or any additional examples that were given in the comments. Now is a good time to pause the video as you work on the exercise, and try not to spend more than 10 minutes.
Okay, well, I hope you've had time to work on the exercise. And now we can turn to nominalizations. Nominalizations are nouns that are created from adjectives or verbs. So, for example, the verb intend can turn into a noun intention, or the verb distort can turn into a noun distortion. Similarly, the adjective difficult can turn into a noun difficulty, or the adjective intense can turn into a noun intensity. There are some cases where you might prefer to use the noun, but in general, nominalizations make sentences more difficult to understand, and they often just kill your writing. So let's look at an example of a nominalization in a sentence. We conducted an investigation of the effect of lattice dimension on collective decay rate. If we use the verb instead, we would say, we investigated the effect of lattice dimension on collective decay rate. The example on the left uses more words and has less energy, while the example on the right uses fewer words and has more energy. Let's look at another example. Although some methods exist, a poor scaling with lattice dimension is observed. If we simply use the verb instead, we would say, although some methods exist, they scale poorly with lattice dimension. The example on the right is more evocative, and it uses a better word in the stress position. Now it's time for just one more exercise. I'd like you to skim through your paper or essay and identify any nominalizations. If you find any, rewrite the sentence by replacing the nominalization with the appropriate verb or adjective. It might help you to find these by knowing that many nominalizations have the following endings. Now is a good time to pause the video as you work on the exercise and try not to spend more than 10 minutes on it. Okay, so I hope you've had a chance to work on this final exercise. And now I'd just like to summarize what we've seen in this video. If you want to make your writing more energized, note the following tips. It's usually better to use the active voice, unless there is a good reason to use the passive voice. Fuzzy verbs say that something happened, but they don't say what. It's better to use active verbs instead. And nominalizations make your writing difficult to understand, so try to use the corresponding verbs or adjectives instead. In the next video, we're going to look at how to condense our writing without using nasty formatting tricks. See you next time!